Many years ago, I used to take pictures of high-power rockets. Some of them were really impressive, like the rocket on the left, which featured carbon fiber construction, very powerful motors with hundreds of pounds of thrust, and could easily break the sound barrier and reach altitudes of 20,000 feet or more. A rocket like that requires special permits and probably costs around $1,500 to build and fly. Compare that to a water rocket that features materials like simple plastic bottles, duct tape, and a few 3D printed parts. It is powered by 300 milliliters of water and 60 psi of compressed air, which is no more pressure than your standard bike tire. It has a max speed of less than 100 miles per hour, and it would be hard pressed to reach 500 feet. It costs about $4 to make. So why am I comparing these two very different rockets? It turns out that these water rockets have extremely fast acceleration, and I wanted to see exactly how fast. I thought it would be fun to use an automotive benchmark and see which one had a faster 0 to 60 time. Before I get into testing the speed of the water rocket, I wanted to give you some background on what first opened my eyes to how fast these things are. Here's an example of a launch picture I took of a conventional high-powered rocket. You can tell from the person in the red shirt on the left, this is a very large rocket, probably around 4 meters tall. It was fairly easy to get a sequence of launch shots with a conventional camera shooting at 8.5 frames per second. Fast forward about 10 years, and I was taking pictures at an elementary school Science Olympiad water rocket competition. I thought it'd be easy to get some launch pictures, considering at this point, I had literally taken thousands of pictures of high power launches. Nope. Even though I was using a more advanced camera by then that could shoot 10 frames per second, I had to get really lucky to get this shot. It took about a dozen launches for me to get a picture like this. That was when I knew these things were really fast, but I never knew exactly how fast. So let's try and figure out how fast several of these conventional high power rockets are going before comparing them to the water rocket. Here's a sequence of four launch pictures. I know the exact frame rate the camera was shooting, so that gives us accurate relative times for each picture. To calculate the average speed between the first and the fourth shot, all we need to do is estimate the distance traveled and do some basic math. Of course, we don't have a nice calibrated scale in this shot, but from the previous estimate of 4 meters height for this rocket, we can guess that it has traveled about 5 meters in 0.354 seconds. That would give an average speed of 14.1 meters per second, or around 32 miles per hour. Keep that speed in mind and also notice the total time, which if you count for the ignition and the time to get to the first frame, it is well over a half a second. Here we'll do the same calculation on another rocket that is using a different type of motor. Here the camera was shooting at 8 frames per second, so the total time from frame 1 to 3 is 0.25 seconds. If we estimate the rocket height at around 2.5 meters, we can estimate the distance traveled at around 3.5 meters, and it does that in 0.25 seconds, which gives an average velocity of 14 meters per second, or around 31 miles per hour, which is very similar to the previous rocket. Finally, we'll do the calculation for the rocket shown earlier. This is an extreme high power rocket, and I know for sure it broke the sound barrier, which is over 700 miles per hour. But let's see how fast it is going here. Again, the camera was shooting at 8 frames per second, and if we estimate the height of the rocket at 2 meters, we can estimate the total distance traveled at around 5 meters. That works out to only around 45 miles per hour average over that distance. So definitely the fastest of the large rockets shown here. Because that 45 miles per hour is an average speed, it could very well be going 60 plus miles per hour at the top of the third frame. The first frame is also not really time zero from ignition. There's another whole frame where the rocket hasn't started moving yet. I think it would be reasonable from this data to estimate that it gets to 60 miles per hour in around 0.375 seconds. That's pretty darn quick, and it means it's pulling over 7 Gs during launch. With all that background out of the way, it's finally time to start looking at the water rocket. Here's an example of a launch in real time shot on a GoPro at 30 frames per second. Three, two, one, crack. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did you miss it? Here it is slowed down to pretty much a slideshow. As you can tell, we get about three usable frames. Some very quick math tells us that the entire event is over in about 0.1 second. Obviously, 30 frames per second is not going to cut it to see what's going on. 
you really need a high-speed camera like the Kronos 2.1. It is a groundbreaking camera in that it is relatively affordable and it can shoot a thousand frames per second in full HD. Even better, like most high-speed cameras, you can lower the resolution and get much higher frame rates. For this application, I decided to shoot at 1920 by 570, which has a maximum frame rate of 1884 frames per second. That should be fast enough to provide some nice data. Here is the same launch we just saw, but now at almost 1900 frames per second. As you can see, it's still pretty fast, but there are enough frames to use the calibration stick to get some accurate data. Now I have horizontal lines drawn that correspond to every 20 centimeters on the calibration stick, and I have slowed the video down to better see what is going on. I am tracking a point on the bottom of the rocket where the time equals zero line is. Every time that same point crosses a line, I count the number of frames and calculate the average speed from the previous line. Here we have hit 60 miles per hour at just under 0.05 seconds, which means it's pulling around 55 Gs on average to that point. Here it is at its top speed of over 76 miles per hour. Now it is just coasting, so I've taken the average over 80 centimeters. And finally, it has reached the top in only 0.115 seconds, which is very close to our estimate of 0.1 seconds from the GoPro footage. So, how do these rockets compare now that we have all the data? It turns out that the water rocket is about 7.5 times faster to 60 miles per hour than the extreme high power rocket. I think that's a really cool result. That incredible acceleration means that there's almost no time to react in getting good launch pictures with a conventional camera. So don't feel too bad if you've never been able to get good pictures of your kid's water rocket. As a bonus, another neat thing you can do with a high-speed camera and water rockets is to have really accurate drag races. Here I've launched the same rocket five different times with the only difference being the amount of water in each. This rocket was made from two 2 liter bottles and it has a maximum volume of 3.2 liters. The launches are in 300 milliliter increments from left to right. It might be really fun to have drag race competitions where every rocket has to use the same amount of water and air pressure to see which design works best. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave suggestions for future video ideas like this in the comments below.